In this UEFN tutorial video, we'll show you how to create a custom intro title sequence or starting title screen that can play at the start of your island. This technique will work for any Fortnite map and game type and doesn't require any verse script. A title or intro sequence can add polish to your experience, setting your island apart and even convey information to your players. Sequences like these can provide backstory, set the mood, and even display who was involved in making the experience. This can be used in any single or multiplayer game mode, and since it doesn't use verse script, no coding knowledge is required. To begin, you'll need to download or create a title and or logo image. However, if you don't have a logo or title image, you can also simply use text instead. Let's start by creating a user widget blueprint. To do this, right-click in the Content Browser to open the Content Browser menu. And under User Interface, select Widget Blueprint. In the Widget Path pop-up box, select User Widget Variant. We'll rename the Widget Blueprint to Logo 1 Widget Blueprint. Double-click the Logo 1 file to open the Widget Editor. The Widget Editor is a window that allows you to create custom UI elements and buttons. With the Widget Editor open, add a Size Box widget which is located in the panel dropdown of the palette panel into your hierarchy or the widget editor viewport. Next, add an overlay widget onto your size box. Next, add the image or text box widget as a child of the overlay widget. With the image or text widget selected, in the slot dropdown sections, change the horizontal alignment to center align horizontally and the vertical alignment to center align vertically. This aligns the image widget in the middle of the screen. However, if you'd like your image or text to appear aligned in another location, feel free to select another option. Next, add your image to the image slot in the brush section under Appearance. Lastly, save your widget blueprint. With our first logo complete, let's duplicate the Logo 1 widget blueprint file two times in the content browser. The first duplication is for an additional logo or text. The second is for the title logo image or text. So we will rename one duplicate to logo 2 widget blueprint and the other duplicate to title widget blueprint. Keep in mind, since the process is the same for each, you can create as many or as few widget blueprints that you'd like to include in your title sequence or throughout your game. Since the duplicate widget blueprint maintains the widget setup from the original, we simply need to change the images and or the text to complete our other widgets. With all of our widgets complete, next we'll need to choose an area in our level. We want the title screen to appear or create a custom area outside of our level. Keep in mind, we can disable the player movement during the title sequence and we can also respawn the players to a play area once the sequence is complete. Once we've chosen or created an area for our title sequence, let's begin setting up the devices we'll need in our scene. The devices we'll need are a HUD message device, a HUD controller device, timer or timed objective device, a fixed point camera, and a mutator zone, which we'll use to disable the player's movement, so it's completely optional. With all our devices in our scene, first we need to duplicate the timer devices and HUD message to match the amount of widget blueprints we plan to use. To begin, let's set up our camera view using the fixed point camera in the area we want the title sequence to appear. This can be any area of the map or a special area created for your title sequence. Next, encompass the player spawn or spawns inside the mutator zone. We'll use the mutator zone to disable player movement, but if you don't want your player movement disabled during the title sequence, you can use the video's chapters to go to the next step. For the Mutator Zone device, we want to ensure these settings. Enabled on Phase is set to Gameplay Only. Zone Visible During Game is set to No. 
Base visible during game is set to no. Selected team is set to any. Selected class is set to any. Affex players is set to any. Allow jumping is set to no. Allow building is set to no. Movement multiplier is set to zero. Enable VFX is set to disable. Allow weapon fire is set to off. Next, add the widget blueprint to the HUD messenger device. Then adjust the display time to the desired length you'd like the logo or title to appear on screen. To do that, we want to go to the HUD widget and change it from the default to the blueprint it should show. We also want to set the placement to custom and the screen anchor to center. Additionally, we want to set show for duration to true, which will ensure the image only displays for a specified amount of time. Set play sound to none. And we can also keep the default or change the intro and outro animations. This determines how our HUD will start and end. Something to note, by adjusting the layer and priority of the message device, you can ensure it plays or is placed on another layer regardless of another message. Messages with a lower number are a higher priority and will move any displayed message on the same layer to a queue. The layer number determines what layer the message displays on. Only one message at a time will display on a layer, and any other messages set to that layer will be queued. Next, we want to connect our HUD message device to our timer devices. In the Functions palette of the HUD messenger, click the plus button next to Show. With the eyedropper, select the first timer device, then select On Success in the drop-down. Next, select the second timer device. Within Functions, click the plus button next to Start. Then using the eyedropper, select the first timer device and choose On Success in the drop-down. Do the same for the third message device, connecting it to the second timer, and third timer device, also connecting it to the second timer. Next, let's set up our timer devices. By selecting all our timer devices at once, we can adjust the settings for all of them simultaneously. The settings for each will be the same, aside from duration and start at game start. Uncheck can interact. Set Complete Behavior to Disable. Set Visible During Game to Hidden. Disable Audio Effects. And lastly, for the published version, uncheck Show on HUD. However, to ensure everything is working properly, we'll leave Show on HUD enabled until after we've tested our title sequences. Next, we want to click Start at Game Start for our first timer device and click Show at Round Start for our first HUD message device. With all our HUD message devices and timer devices set, for our final steps, we need to set up our HUD controller, as well as set the HUD controller and mutator device to get disabled upon completing the title sequence. For our HUD controller device settings, we simply need to change the first setting, show HUD, to no. Lastly, we want to navigate to the functions palette for our HUD controller device Add an element to disable, then with the eyedropper select the last timer device, and in the drop-down choose On Success. We also want to ensure the duration time of our timer devices matches the duration time of our HUD messengers. Set the time for round start on our first HUD message device to zero. This will ensure our message device doesn't delay showing our logo at the start of our title sequence. Lastly, we need to disable our fixed point camera once our last timer is complete. To do this, select the fixed point camera, then under functions add an element to remove from player. Then with the eyedropper select the last timer device and in the drop down choose on success. With all our setup complete, let's test our title menu in Fortnite.
If you followed all the steps correctly, you should see your logo and the countdown duration on screen. Once the countdown is complete, we should instantly see the next HUD message pop up. Once our final countdown is complete, the title should disappear, the Fortnite HUD should be visible, and the mutator zone should be disabled, allowing the player or players to move. What kind of epic intros will you create? Share your projects and island code in the comments below, and let's inspire each other. Remember, your intro sequence is your canvas. Experiment, have fun, and let your imagination run wild. We're just getting started with UEFN and Fortnite Creative's potential for customization. In future videos, we'll dive deeper into advanced effects, scripting options, and even collaborative creation. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, don't hesitate to leave a comment. We're always listening.